G'day guys, Liam here from Thorburns. We're here today, we're gonna to chuck a gullwing in the Troopy. So we thought we'd tell you a little about the gullwing that we manufacture and some of the benefits and some of the design features that we offer. Um, first things first, we've got two nice sturdy compression latches. So burglary can be a big thing and keeping the car contents nice and safe is probably a number one priority. So good strong latches along with a, a six mil door. So any much thinner and a screwdriver can break in quite easily. So we do a nice thick door for the same reason. I've got a good strong and good quality rubber seal and a backing plate on the inside. So the install's not too hard. It's reasonably easy, it takes a bit of time, but rip a product. Here you can put the shower, recovery gear, anything. It just gives you nice and easy access on the inside of the car. All right guys, let's get cracking on with the install. Uh, first things first, you basically unbox the product, make sure all the components are there and sit it on a bench, just give it a once over and then you tackle the window of the Troopy. The window of the Troopy is really quite easy to install. There's a backing rubber along the inside, like a pinch weld that goes over the steel of the body and the, the window. So you pull that off on the inside and then there's four little clips that you remove. So we'll jump on the inside of the car, we'll get that done, and then we'll move on to the next part. All right, guys, now jump inside of the car and you can see this pinch weld that they have around all four of the windows. So depending on the going you're tackling, just go behind it. I've got a pretty simple trim removal tool. I just pop the seal and I pull that off the whole way around the window. So put that aside. And then you've got four little metal clips that hold the window to the sill of the car and you remove all four of those as well. So they look like that. You just remove all four of them from the window. All right, from here, we've removed all four of those clips and we're trying to separate the window from the sill. So depending on the age of your car, there's some really tacky mastic that's in between the window and the sill, keeping it all nice and sealed. And I just use the same removal tool and just be nice and gentle and patient and work around basically the whole length of the window to separate it. Sometimes two, three or four Tools can be really handy, a bit like doing a tyre on a bike. Once it starts to go, you can put pressure on the whole window to see if it starts to come away, but it's best just to take your time, go nice and easy and just work around all right guys, sometimes here, if you do have a second person, it can be quite handy. Just having someone lever the window on the out whilst I'll use these tools can be really convenient. If you don't, still one person's fine. You just got to take a bit more time, use the tool slowly and work your way right around. Luckily enough, we've got a second person. So we're going to chuck them on the outside, get them to pull the window while I pressure from the inside. As we start to remove it, if you go too far from the bottom, it can bind up the top. So it's best to move from the sides of the window out. There you have it, window's out, and now to tackle the next step. All right, we've taken the window out and we're up to the next stage. So this is a stage where just take your time. The better you do here, the better your install looks at the finished product. So we've got this black glue and you just get a bit of it on your fingers and you just keep peeling it off. So it comes off pretty easy on this car because it's nice and new. If you've got an older car, it can take a bit longer, but you peel this black glue off the whole way around the window and then make sure you clean up 
all of this area as nice as you possibly can. Sometimes some car polish is handy and you just give it a nice good clean so that when the gullwing goes in, that area that you see looks Mickey Mouse. All right, let's get and pull all this black glue off. So just again, guys, as I pull this off, any residue that we leave, we're gonna go back over and do that again. And any dust or any residue that's on the bottom sill, we spend the time, we get some polish, and we give it a good clean so that the finished product looks amazing. All right, guys, so I've basically got all of the black sticky stuff off, but as you can see, there's still some residue around the whole frame. So we're gonna get like a, a nice gentle cleaner, even some soapy water and a clean rag and just clean all this area up to get rid of anything. Basically, you just wanna see paint. So clean this area up and then we'll tackle the next step. All right, so what we've done is we've taken the old window out and we're basically at a stage now where we can start prepping this area to put the gullwing back in. So we've cleaned it all up, it looks immaculate, which is probably the key to this part. So get it looking as good as you possibly can for the age of your car. Then we move on to the next part. So we're gonna prep this area to put the gullwing in. So we're gonna get masking tape and we're gonna masking tape up the whole frame of the window. From there, we can place the window in, mark some holes, get the drill out, get that ready. But masking tape is a must. It stops you scratching any of the body and it really plays a pivotal role in getting everything looking mint. So let's get the masking tape, masking tape it up, put the window in and go from there. All right, masking tape, pretty simple. So we're gonna mask up the whole area. Um, up the top, you've got some bolts and the window being nice and snug fit, the clearance is good, but we put about five or so layers up here, which basically aligns the window for us. So that spaces the top correctly, the bottom correctly, and then we just need to space it left and right when we're marking the holes. So I'm gonna go now, mask and tape it up, and then we'll mark those holes. All right, guys, so our gullwing comes in a box pretty much fully assembled. It's, a, it's really, really, really handy that it's all put together the way that it needs to go on in the car. Um, that being said, you do need to pull off this bracket and this bracket and our backing ring. So the way our gullwing's designed is there's a full plate on the inside and the outside, just keeping everything secure and everything nice and in line with the two gas struts. So from there, we're gonna undo these nylock nuts across the whole way around of the gullwing, pull these two brackets and our backing ring off, and then we're gonna get the gullwing itself and put it in the window of the car, ready to mark the holes and ready to put it in. All right, so I've just flipped the gullwing upside down on a nice soft bench so the front of it remains nice and clean. And now you do have to remove these gas struts. So there's a little kind of circle on the end. You just get a screwdriver in, don't pop it all the way off, but just pop it a little bit, and that allows the gas strut to come off. And then another important note is to keep a note of the way this bracket is situated on the gullwing. So that goes on the inside of the car, gullwing on the outside of the car, and having that bracket like that is the way that it needs to go back on in the car. So just so no mistakes are made, keep a mental image or take a quick photo of the way that bracket and that bracket are. So I just put a bit of pressure there and then bang, gas struts off, bit of pressure, bang. All right, so what I've done, pop the two locks just to allow it to separate a little bit and then pull out all the nuts and bolts. Put the nuts and bolts in a safe location. You don't want to lose any of that stuff. And then we've got this backing. So integral part of the design this goes on the inside of the window while the window goes on the outside and it sandwiches the sill of the window in between the two sections. So big on security, massive thing. I know I keep ragging on about it, but you've got sometimes thousands of dollars of stuff in this car, so you want it to be nice and safe. So for now, I just pop that in a safe location. I'm just gonna put it in the back of the car and then we're gonna grab the gullwing and we're gonna place it in here center it up left to right and then just grab a, a sharpie nice fine texture and mark where to drill the holes all right 
we've put a bit of plastic down because we are going to drill a few holes and the hot swarf can damage anything underneath. So a bit of stuff there just to prevent any damage to any of the paint. And then we're going to grab the gullwing, put it in, simple, sharpie, mark the holes. The top holes on the gull wings can be a little bit difficult, so here's another layer that if you have a second person, it can be pretty handy. Um, if not, just take your time, sit it in there, mark the holes gently, and happy days. So, as you can see, the tape just is priceless here. We push the gull wing all the way to the top, Look at the left and the right sides and give the holes a mark. All right, so when we put that going in, we actually centered it really nice, but with the texture and the poor clearance up the top, we missed the top holes. So I'm just gonna grab the backing plate the pitch of the holes is exactly the same. It's light, it's easy to handle. I'm gonna place that in. But something really important to note is this middle hole is offset. So you really need to make sure you line it up on the going first and then transfer that over. So what I've done, I'll transfer that over to here. I'll grab the Sharpie and being so much easier to handle, I'll mark these top three holes. All right, so I've marked the holes. Gullwing's prep, mark the holes. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a four mil drill bit on the cordless drill. I'm gonna just take my time, nice and gently, drill out the top and the bottom holes, and these two on the side. So the upper, upper holes on the left and right hand side of the gullwing and then I'm gonna tap that with an M5 tap. And so what that allows you to do, especially if there's one person, is grab the gullwing, you put silicon around, and you can really easily, with one person, just put the gullwing on and sandwich it in between. You'll notice these bottom holes, there's a bit of a clearance clashing, but you need that for the clearance on the gullwing. So you still drill them out, you just drill as close as you can, and you find that they, there might be a little bit of a half hole, but that's no problem at all. As long as we paint all the holes after we've tapped them, keep any of that rust issue out of there, we're gonna silicon it and paint it to keep that at a, at a bay. So let's drill these holes, rip all the masking tape off, and then we can get cracking on putting the going in. All right, so something else to note is, depending on the drill you're using, the chuck can be quite large, and drilling these holes, either use a drill stopper, or just, I just put my hand there, that, so as the drill goes through, it doesn't mark any of the body here. The tape does help, but you never know, but always better to be safe than sorry, so I just put my hand over and make sure I drill nice and gently. Got an M5 tap on the drill. If you're not confident doing that, you can easily just run a T-bar. And I'm gonna run a tap through the bottom holes, the middle hole on the sides and the top holes. And then I'm gonna pull all the tape off, give it a countersink and give that area a nice good paint. So paint is sealing any of that exposed steel that we've created by drilling the holes. It's a really important part of the job and it's a must do. So even a bit of like gal spray on a cable tie or something just to get in there nice and nice and protect that area. So tap, we'll go through that, we'll pull the tape off and we'll go from there. I've just got a little countersink bit. So I'm just gonna go through any of the holes I've done, just touch up that rough edge. 
So it's mainly the top bottom and these, these ones. Touch that up and this is really important as the drill gets closer to the paint to be really careful. So I'm gonna go do that on the outside and the inside and then pull all this off. All right guys, just something to note as I've finished drilling the holes. Don't be worried about the holes where the gas strut bracket is. So like the bottom two on the side being about a half hole. So that doesn't actually go all the way through the sill. It's kind of um, just halfway in. You can either do that with a die grinder or a drill bit, but don't be too worried about that. It's, as long as these two are centered and it's kind of towards the top there, you've got no issue. So we'll pull that tape off and get cracking. Just gonna grab a vacuum, any swarf that's fallen, I give the area a nice good vacuum, get rid of any debris, anything that's coming off. So as we pull that tape off, there's no chance of scratching anything. All right, pull everything off, just give everything an inspect, make sure there's no sharp edges and then get to painting those little holes. So paint all the little holes, Make sure there's no exposed steel anywhere. All right, so what we've got is just some rust guard, quick dry enamel paint and a cotton bud. We're gonna dip it in the paint and then nice and gently, don't get too much paint on your cotton bud, you're better off to do it a few times. And then just gently paint all the holes around. If you want to give it two coats, that's also okay. Bit of paint. All right, so I've gone around with a cotton bud and we've painted all those holes. So just give it a nice close up inspection and make sure you can't see anything bare. If you do, Go again, a little bit more paint, happy days. You just want to really give that area a good coating to protect it. From there, we're going to wait, you know, half an hour, 15 minutes, whatever the paint says to dry, and then we're going to put a bead, a real small bead of silicon on the closest edge to the gap, the whole way around, and we're going to grab the gullwing and put it on. And now that those holes are tapped, it's quite easy to just sit the gullwing in place put what ones you can in, and then the silicon will squeeze up against the seal. We go on the inside, do another layer of silicon to make sure that seal is tip top, backing plate on, and happy days. All right guys, so the paint's dried, and what I'm doing here, I'm actually chucking the backing plate on the, the front side, just to check that my holes line up. And what I've noticed is it's almost impossible with a drill to get everything perfect. So I'm actually gonna drill this hole and this hole out just to six mil. It gives a little bit of clearance, it doesn't matter at all, and it'll allow my bolts to all go in nicely when I do silicon. So I find that this step is quite handy. If you wanna chuck the goal in, go, by all means, go for gold. But if you just take your time, check that all your holes line up, and if you find one doesn't quite line up, just give it a drill out. Um, then when you put the silicon on and the going on, it goes on like a breeze. So we're just going to drill these two holes out, give it another test fit, and then silicon going in. All right, so we've got some black silicon. Now, it doesn't actually need to glue the going in. Because we've got a front fascia and a back, which is sandwiching around the sill, this is just a sealant. So we're going to run it quite close to this top edge you know, close to the opening the whole way around. We do seal on the inside, but this just allows some seal in between the two so that as water tracks, it doesn't get in anywhere. So small speed the whole way around, and then we'll pick up the going, place it in nice and gently. It's a bit of a fine line. You don't want too much silicon, you don't want too little. So you can always wipe it off later, but the less wiping and stuff you have to do later, the neater it ends up turning out. So. We'll put some in, show you how much we've used.
All right, we've put a thin layer of silicon around the sill of the troopy and we're ready to put the gull wing in there. Something to note is when it was assembled, there's actually two different sizes of the M5. So there's four longer ones. The four longer ones are used down here. So just be sure to set them aside because you don't want to put the going in with the wrong size bolts. It's just a nightmare to pull them in and out. So get the shorter ones. There's, I think, eight shorter ones there for the top, bottom and the two middles. So get the shorter ones, get all your tools ready, dealing with silicon, bit of a nightmare. So get your tools ready, shorter bolts, and then we're gonna grab the going, gently place it in. I generally start with the first one at the top and then work my way around from there. All right, if you can grab that side and then you can grab it by the gutter, whatever you want, really. Just sit it down there. Up higher. Uh, up higher on your side. Yeah, yeah, close. Got it. All right, so what we've done is we've bolted it through and we've tightened up mainly all the bolts, but not the gas strut bracket bolts from the outside in. We've come on the inside of the car and we've, we're looking between the sill and the gull wing to see that the, the silicon has pressed the whole way around. And then even if it has, we're gonna get the silicon gun and we are going to run a bead of silicon between the gull wing and the sill of the troopy. So just between here and here, we're gonna run a beta silicon the whole way around. You don't see it, even if a little bit presses out on the inside, it's always better to have a nice seal when we put that backing plate on. So the backing plate does cover pretty much any of your mess. We'll run the silicon right way around and then we know that even in the pouring rain, you're gonna have a good seal the whole way around. So let's get that done, get a squirter bottle, we'll wipe it nice and clean, and then we'll put the backing plate on the inside gas strut brackets, and we're pretty close to being complete. I've just got a cup of soapy water. What that allows me to do is I just dunk my finger and I run it around any excess, I put on the rag and I give it a good seal the whole way around and make sure I inspect it and there's no gaps. It means no water ingress is when it's run, when it's coming in and it's sealed the whole way around when we put that backing plate on. So here we go. From here, we grab the backing plate, put it on the inside, wash up, nylock nut. Nylock nut means that you can't undo the nuts from the outside, so again, nice and secure, and then we can put the backing plate, tighten it all up, clean any of the excess silicon, do the same on the outside. Gas struts and leave it for 24 hours and you're right to jet on your trip. All right, so I've got my eight mil nuts and washers. I've got my backing plate. So we're just gonna sit the backing plate on, line it up, put it on, and then do them all up. We've put the backing plate, we've nipped all the bolts up. So basically all we have to do now is run to the front Check that there's no squeeze of the silicon as we've tightened everything up around the sill. Give that a clean up and then get those gas strut brackets. Check the photo that we took to make sure we're putting them on correctly. Run two bolts three through. If you're on your own, lift it up and you can get to the front of the bolts. It's a little bit tricky, but handy if you do have a partner, you can get them on the front side with an Allen key while you put the brackets on the back side. We're going to grab the brackets, we'll put them on and we'll show you pretty much the finished product. Alright, we've got the bracket, 
the taper comes down and the nipple on the inside. So throw him on like so. Two nylocks, two washers. All right, I'm lucky enough to have my mate on the outside. Top one. All right, we're going to chuck the gas strut on one side to help it hold it up while we tackle the other side. Something to note, it's always best to put this at the top. It just lubricates the bottom part of the gas strut while it operates. So put, clip the top on, clip the bottom on, and now we can tackle this side a lot easier. We're pretty much complete. We're gonna go tidy up the front side to make it look Mickey Mouse. All right guys, so we've had the tiniest little bit of silicon squeeze through. So I just get about four or five, six, seven, eight, whatever, fresh rags. And I just kind of tuck it in the side and I just take my time, go around the whole going, make sure I'm really happy that it's neat and tidy. This is the part where it's really important that it shows that you clean this sill to the best of your ability. We finished the gullwing and it looks absolutely fantastic because we took the time earlier to do a proper job on the bottom. So we'll clean that silicon up and then she'll be done. Let the silicon dry and away we go. All right guys, easy as that. So we've cleaned up the outside of the gullwing, all the little bits of silicon that you can see now you can see how easy it is to use. Pops up, two gas struts, it gives you really easy access on the inside of that car. So some people run two, Matt's gonna run a shower on the inside of his, but it's just such a good feature on the Troopies to be able to get access. So good, solid design, nice and secure. Keyed, all keyed alike if you want, with a nice little rain gutter to help prevent any runoff going inside that door. If you want one, visit the website, give us a call, shoot us an email. Do it yourself, get us to do it. Cheers.